In 1916, the borough of Monoy City had reached its 53rd birthday. In those 53 years, the borough had expanded from a few dozen frame houses and a handful of businesses to become what was known in the words of newspaper publisher James Kirshner as the city on the level, a thriving borough of almost 17,000 people served by more than 600 businesses. The rapid growth of the Mahanoy Valley was made possible by the building of the East Mahanoy Tunnel from 1859 to 1862 by a crew of immigrant Irish laborers. In 1976, the 3,441 foot long tunnel was enlarged to accommodate the larger steam engines of the PNR Railroad. Two feet of rock and dirt was excavated from the floor of the tunnel by a crew of 224 men working in two shifts around the clock. The job was completed in three months at a cost of $41,000. No train traffic was disturbed during the course of the project. Soon more than 40 collieries were spread across the eastern end of the Mahanoy Valley, all within five miles of Mahanoy City. Many of these privately owned mines were soon purchased by the powerful Philadelphia and Reading Coal and Iron Company and the Lehigh Valley Coal and Navigation Company. The Reading and the Lehigh then closed or consolidated many of the smaller collieries. In 1916, these 17 collieries employed over 10,000 men and boys above and below ground and were working practically every day. Most of the workers were from Monoy City and the surrounding patches. In 1916, over 5 million tons of coal were mined by these 17 local mining operations.
Dr. W. N. Earhart, Mahone City's superintendent of schools for 18 years around the turn of the century, was the father of the borough's free public library. His tenure as superintendent covered the hectic two decades in which the borough's population grew to its all-time high. The emphasis on the importance of education which Dr. Earhart fostered had its full impact in the decade after his death in 1915. For several years in the mid-1920s, Mahanoy City's high school enrollment was the highest in Schuylkill County. Dr. William Nelson Earhart devoted the last two decades of his life to the education of a generation and left a lasting legacy in the form of a free public library. Bill O'Brien, Mahanoy City Chronicles, 1988. In 1916, Mahanoy City had 20 churches, 13 Protestant and 7 Catholic, at least one church on every east-west street except railroad. For a while, the town's worshippers of the Hebrew faith used the former Christophadelphian church in the first block of East South Street. 
Then on January 20th, 1924, Beth Israel Synagogue at Katowice and West Monoy Street was dedicated. Two weeks earlier, the town's Ukrainian Catholics attended Mass on Christmas Day, January 7th, in the newly completed St. Nicholas Church at the corner of Monoy and B Streets.
Mahanoy City's newspaper history began in 1865 with the founding of the Mahanoy City Gazette. In 1871, the Mahanoy Valley Record began, and then in 1893, the Daily American. After years of name changes and consolidations, these three newspapers eventually merged into the Mahanoy City Record American, which began publication on September 2, 1919, under the leadership of James Kirshner. Kirshner had started out as a breaker boy in St. Nicholas and became a newsboy when his widowed mother moved the family to Monoy City in the 1880s. Jim rose through the newspaper ranks to become an editor and publisher for over a half century. Monoy City was also home of the Sol, a Lithuanian language newspaper founded by Dominic Baczkowski. The Saw, the largest Lithuanian language newspaper in the world, was published from 1888 to 1959. In 1916, Monoy City had four theaters, The Family, The Elks, and Altoffs, all in the 100 block of East Center, and The Palace, which was located at Main and Pine Street, where Augusti's parking lot is now situated.
In 1916, Mahanoy City's grandest theater was but a memory. The Kyer Grand Opera House had burned to the ground three years earlier. Plans to rebuild the Opera House came to a quick end with the sudden death of Margaret Curry Kyer just a few months after the tragic fire. The lot at Main and Market Street would stand empty until 1925 when the beautiful Victoria Theater opened. The Vic was a borough landmark for more than 70 years. Sadly, it was demolished in 1996. The mansion house at Main and Center Streets was the hub of the town's activities. Old timers can remember the original large front porch facing Center Street with comfortable rocking chairs where boarders and traveling salesmen whiled away summer evenings in conversation. The mansion building of more modern times left its own special memories for the bobby socks and saddle shoes generations who gathered at the Embassy Grill. Bill O'Brien, Mono City Chronicles, 1988. Starting in December of 1892 and continuing for more than 30 years, trolleys were a common sight on Center Street and North Main Street in Mahanoy City. One line of the electric railway traveled to Gilberton, Gerardville, and Ashland, and another line went from North Main Street to Bowman's, Robinson's, Barry's, and Jackson's Patches, and then to Shenandoah. Trolley service ended in 1927 and the rails were removed in 1933. By 1916, the horse and buggy era was coming to an end in Monoy City. Stables and blacksmiths would increasingly be replaced by garages as the Kyer Brewery and other businesses switched from horse-drawn wagons to trucks. By the end of the 1920s, the trolley had been replaced by buses. Dirt roads had been macadamized and more and more people would travel to the city in automobiles instead of trains. The Lehigh Valley Railroad ended passenger service in the 1930s and the last Reading passenger train left Monoy City in 1963, 100 years after the first train had arrived. What promised to be the finest automobile parade ever held in this region was moored last evening by a heavy downpour of rain which descended just as the long line of automobiles started to move along the route of the parade. 
Mahanoy American, September 5, 1913. It was always a great thrill to see these huge engines belching immense clouds of black smoke from their boilers. The freight trains often had 100 or more cars in a trip. Daily passenger surface on the Reading was six trains going east and five trains going west. Mahanoy City had passenger service 100 years and eight days, June 22, 1863 to June 30, 1963. Elwood M. Young.
Tomorrow is the day and Lakewood Park is the place for the annual outing of the Father Matthew Pioneer Corps, labeled one of the biggest events of the summer session and without a doubt the biggest day of the summer to those whose hearts are endeared to the Emerald Isle. Tomorrow so near and yet out of the grass, but eagerly awaited for by thousands of people from Mahanoy City and vicinity who have planned for weeks back to make this day memorable. Everything is in readiness. Fair weather is promised by the weathermen and nothing remains but to sit back and patiently wait for the dawning and the start of the all-day lark. Special trains will run to and from the park all day. For the picnickers who will have a basket, a delightful basket without which no picnic is ever a picnic, a baggage car will be on the siding at the p &R station from 7 o'clock until the special pulls out. Place your basket in the baggage car, place a tag on it, and then hunt for it at the park. Sure, it is half the day gone if there is no basket. Mahanoy City Record American, July 17, 1923.